So when we're looking at Newton's second and third law, they are both laws that relate the motion of a body to forces acting on it. And the second law is familiar to you from high school physics. It's Newton's law that says F equals MA. Let's look into what that means. That means that the force of the guy pushing on the Volkswagen bus in Newtons is equal to the mass of the Volkswagen bus in kilograms times the acceleration, once he really starts pushing it and gets in, getting it going, in meters per second per second. In other words, acceleration is change in velocity over time. And change in velocity equals meters per second. So we say this is meters per second squared, change in velocity over time. F equals ma. And we talked about the fact that one of the external forces that acts on Earth is the gravitational pull of the sun that changes its direction. So we can measure the gravitational force of the sun on Earth with F equals ma. We can get the mass of the Earth and we can get the gravitational constant of the sun pulling on the Earth. We can me measure all that out and it comes into this massive number. But I just thought I'd give you this analogy of what the number is. I did all the calculations and it's the force of a Saturn V rocket, but not just one Saturn V rocket. It's the force of enough Saturn V rockets to cover the surface area of the Earth 200 times over, lined back to back to back to back to back, all firing at once. And that force is the force that pulls on the Earth from the sun at all times. So think about that. Enough Saturn V rockets launching to cover the Earth 200 times. Amazing. And that is due to the enormous mass of the sun. You can compare that to the amount of force that the Earth pulls on a baseball. F equals ma the mass of the baseball times the gravitational constant of the Earth pulling on the baseball. Newton's third law is the one you know of, of for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And you know that law. We're just going to extend it a bit. If we think about that, we think about every action as an equal and opposite reaction, we're actually saying that gravitation is mutual. What happens, one happens to the other in the opposite way. In other words, if the Earth pulls on the moon, and we know that it does because it pulls it into orbit, then the moon pulls onto the Earth. And we know that it does because the moon pulls the tides. We can actually say that those two forces, the force of the Earth pulling on the moon and the force of the moon pulling on the Earth, are equal. And that might seem counterintuitive because you might say, well, the force of the Earth pulling on the moon is going to be a lot higher. But if we look at it as F equals ma, they even out. And they even out on a couple of different ways, and I'll go through it with you. Let's talk about the force of the moon pulling on the Earth. Well, the mass of the Earth is quite high. And the amount of pull that the moon can pull on the Earth is quite low. I mean, it's really only the tides, and that's 30 centimeters or so twice a day. So you have a high mass that it's pulling and a low acceleration. On the other hand, the Earth pulls on the moon. And the moon is relatively low mass compared to the Earth. And the Earth can really pull the moon effectively, a high level of acceleration, because it can maintain that orbit. So these two forces are equal and opposite, the third law. This happens, this law applies universally. 
for everything from atoms of helium to galaxies that pull against each other. So the third law is mutual and universal. This is a review of the three laws. The first law, object at rest or object at motion. Second law, F equals MA, what the force is in mathematics. The third law is equal and opposite reaction. After those three laws that Newton devised, he spent the rest of his plague break writing the universal law of gravitation, which says that all objects with mass attract all other objects with mass in the universe. Okay, we'll look into that a little bit more, but before we go there, we want to make sure that you know that mass does not equal weight. Mass is the amount of matter, the amount of stuff, the amount of atoms that are in an object. My mass is the same on Earth as it is on the moon, as it is on the sun, as it is on Neptune. That's the amount of matter. My weight is subject to the gravitational pull of the Earth, of the moon, of the sun, of Neptune. My weight can vary my mass won't. Now, if mass increases, speaking of the sun, then the force of gravity, the attraction force increases. If the distance increases, like Neptune has less gravity from the sun, because the distance between the sun and Neptune is greater than the distance between the sun and the earth. We can put this into a mathematical relationship that's based on Newton's law of universal gravity. So Newton's law of university of universal gravity can be graphed and the graph would involve distance and it would involve gravitational force. And as distance grows, gravitational force gets smaller and smaller. As distance increases, gravi gravitational force decreases. Distance is going to be on the x-axis. It's going to be the independent measure, the independent variable. As it increases from 0 to 6 units, or 350 million units, the gravitational force, which is on the y-axis, and it's the independent variable, will decrease. And it'll decrease to almost nothing, but it will never go to zero. This curve that you see here has a mathematical construct to it. You can make that mathematical construct into an analogy that gravity is like a can of spray paint. And the, the um, can of spray paint does really well when the distance between the can of spray paint and the little sticky is really close. The can of spray paint will completely cover that one little sticky. If you double the distance between the can of spray paint, the sticky is only going to get about a quarter of the paint. If you double the distance, between the two objects, the objects are going to have only about a quarter of the gravity between them. If you triple the distance between the spray paint and the sticky, you're going to have about one ninth of the paint on the sticky. If you triple the distance between the objects, you're going to have about one ninth the amount of gravity between those objects and so on. And this relationship is called the inverse square law. In other words, we take the square of the distance and we put it in the denominator. We invert it so that the gravitational pull between two objects is proportional to the square of their distance apart. 
when I double the distance, when the distance is two meters, I square it and I get that the gravitational pull is one quarter of what it was when they were within one meter of each other. When I triple the distance between the two objects, I square the distance and the gravitational pull between the two objects is now decreased to one ninth. When I quadruple the distance between two objects, I actually have one sixteenth the amount of gravitational pull. This relationship says that the gravitational force is proportional to the squared distance in the denominator. As this distance increases in the denominator, the gravitational force is going to decrease. And I will see you on the other side.